Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Victoria from Keep It Holistic, where I talk about healthy living, motherhood, and more. And today I'm going to be sharing baby's first foods, and I'll be going through what we did this past week for our baby's first few meals. So when babies start to eat, they're not going to be eating a lot. So I think a lot of people think that at first they're going to be like eating a full meal. They don't. They're just eating like a few bites of food. They're not eating a lot. Um, and usually people like to start with single foods and that's what we did and then soon we'll progress into eating like parts of our meals. So before your baby actually starts eating solid food, you have to make sure that they're ready to eat solid food. And so typically that is around six months on average, but some babies can be four months, five months. And some babies it's after six months before they're ready to eat solid food. And that's actually been the case with my kids. All my kids that weren't really ready for solid food until around seven or eight months. So my son, he is seven and a half months and that's when we started feeding him solid food. That's when he started like trying to grab at our plates and you know, tried to, uh, you know, mouthing like he's ready to eat. Um, and so you want to make sure that you look for the signs of readiness and signs of readiness include sitting up. And so they don't have to be fully sitting up, like completely unassisted, you know, not wobbly, like sturdy. It's okay if the baby's wobbly a little bit. My son, he still um, puts his hands out to support himself. He kind of wobbles a little bit, but he can sit up in the high chair. So his stomach muscles are strong enough for that. And then another thing you want to look for is if there's, they still have a tongue thrust reflex, which is when they kind of push the food to the front of their mouth. You don't want that because obviously they can't eat if they're kind of spitting out all the food, pushing it out. And another thing is that the baby should be able to be reaching and grabbing things. They don't necessarily have to develop the pincer grasp yet. That's when you pinch, like you go like this. But at six months, they'll be doing what is looks like this. They'll just be kind of <laughs> grabbing at stuff. So that goes into play when you're cutting up the food. So you want to make sure that you're cutting pieces. If you're doing baby led weaning, you're cutting pieces that they can actually grab. You can't do like little tiny Cheerio sized pieces. You have to have like a full slice of avocado. So I'll go into that into the food preparation part in a second. But before you start solids, I would get a few things first. You don't have to have a lot to feed your baby solids. You could literally just sit them on your lap and start giving them food. But there are some things that make it easier when you're feeding your baby. And so first off is having some kind of smock. I actually even use these for my older kids who are three and five. My five-year-old is kind of growing out of this, but my three-year-old definitely still uses this. Um, and this will protect their clothes that they have clothes on or you can feed your baby in a diaper and I even even when he's in the diaper I still put this on him so they come in different sizes and I'll try to link things down below that can be helpful um, you also might want to put something over the floor depending on what type of flooring you have in your kitchen and also on the baby we like to use these too and that will kind of all the food will kind of collect down here I don't recommend using cloth bibs because they get really really dirty really fast and you end up going through a lot of them these go right into the dishwasher so i love these silicone bibs and so with a lot of the baby stuff i tend to use silicone because it's easier to keep clean and this i'll just throw right into our washer i'll just do it on a quick like wash or like a rinse or something to get the food off of it one trick that i have to share as a more experienced parent that i didn't do with my firstborn was i used to when my first was little, I would put her this on her first. I put something like her bib or smock on first and then strap her into the high chair. I wouldn't recommend that. I would put the um, smock over top of the straps and that will keep your straps clean. Those straps get dirty really fast if you don't have them covered up. So that is my piece of advice for you. <laughs> and. Um, some other things that we have, um, I recommend bowls or plates. This one doesn't have it, but I recommend the ones with the suction on the bottom because it makes it harder for the baby to pull up. Um, and then child size utensils. As they get older, they're not going to be using a lot of utensils at first, but it's helpful once they get bigger. And I don't have one right now, but I usually give our kids a silicone smaller cup or stainless steel, so, you know, something healthy, non-toxic. Um, I don't recommend sippy cups because they're not good for the child's oral development. I recommend either using a cup or a 360 cup. That's where it has a little cover on the top of it. it makes it hard to spill, but the baby can still hold it up and sip out of it. Or I recommend a straw, a cup with a straw, and I'll share one real quick here. So I just scoured my whole kitchen and I can't find the cups. Since we've moved, it's been harder to find things, especially in the kitchen for some reason. It's been like 
digging through stuff and can't find it. So um, I'll have the right ones linked down below. Another thing I like to have is I have one of these. They're called a life vac and this is not sponsored. Um, I'm not being paid to advertise this. This is not an instructional video, but um, we have two of these and we keep one in the house. And we have these on hand because we had a friend whose child died last year from choking. So we keep one of these now. And this helps to um, pull lodged food out of the baby's throat if they choke on it. So this kind of gives us a little extra peace of mind. It's not a necessity, but it just is good for your peace of mind. <laughs> and as far as baby like weenie versus giving your baby purees, there's no one right way to do it. It's just like personal preference. The benefit of doing baby let weaning is it gets the baby to feed themselves a little bit sooner and it kind of frees up your hands so you're not sitting there feeding them the whole meal and then you eat cold food at the end of the meal because I've done that. Um, with the purees, the benefit of that is it's a little bit less messy and you're making sure the baby's actually getting more of the food. Um, I feel that with baby weaning, more of it goes on the baby and the floor but they do start becoming independent sooner. So as far as food preparation, it's important to make the food in long and thinner sized chunks so that the baby can grab one end of it and then chew on the other end of it. And you wanna do softer foods. You don't wanna do anything like really hard. You want something that they can kind of gnaw on. So for our, ba our baby's very first food, we chose to do avocado and we sliced it into long thin slices and then he was able to grab it and then not on the end of it. It does get pretty messy, just to warn you. Um, be prepared for things to go on the floor. It's pretty normal. Things are gonna go everywhere and not a lot of it's gonna go in the baby's mouth, especially with baby Lenwini. Food that's a little bit more mushy or softer, like an applesauce consistency, you can either give the baby it directly on a spoon, you know how you do purees, or you could put the pureed food on the spoon and sit the spoon in front of the baby and allow them to grab it on their own and feed themselves with it. They will do that. So we mostly eat a Weston May Price diet and they emphasize eating nutrient dense foods. And if you've ever read the book, the Nourishing Traditions Baby and Child Care book, it's like the pregnancy and baby book for Nourishing Traditions. It's a purple cover. They talk about egg yolk as a great first food. So we decided to do that. But before giving the egg yolk to our baby, we decided to do a little skin test on his leg and then we just um, put a band-aid over it so he couldn't pick it off. And then we waited a few hours to see if there was a reaction and he didn't react to it. So we went ahead and gave him egg yolk. So I'll share how I prepare my soft boiled eggs real quick in my Instant Pot. So what I do is I put cold, fresh out of the refrigerator eggs into my Instant Pot with a little bit of water and then I have my egg tray in there and then I put the lid on and I set it to three minutes and then I do a one minute natural release and then I put the eggs directly into ice water. So after a few minutes, the eggs should be cooled down enough to eat and so we'll go ahead and crack it up and we cut it in half and then you scoop out the yolk and the yolk should be kind of a jelly, maybe slightly liquidy center. You don't want it cooked all the way because that will cook out some of the nutrients. And this ended up being one of my baby's favorite first foods. He loves this and the avocado. So avocado was also one of our baby's first foods and we cut it up into thin slices like I mentioned. He got really tired and full after eating this. One of the foods my son did not like that I was kind of surprised by because my other kids really liked this, but he did not like sweet potato or butternut squash. We gave him some of that. And how we prepared this was we basically made fries from tea and we cooked it really well so they were pretty mushy and this almost fell apart. But he did not like any of those orange mushy vegetables. When you're cooking and preparing some of baby's first foods, you can add a little bit of bone broth when you're cooking. So if you're making something like butternut squash, you could add in a little bit of bone broth to it. Another one of our baby's first foods was actually bone marrow. I just happened to be making some bone broth with marrow bones. And so I just scooped out the marrow out of the bones and then I put it in the refrigerator and then gave it to him the next day and he liked that. Another thing that we'll probably do soon, I just wanted to get him used to single ingredients first, but we might start grating some liver on top of some of his food. 
Another thing you can do is if you have cod liver oil, you could put a drop or a couple of drops of that on the food to add a little bit of an extra boost to the food. So there's not really one way to do baby's first foods. It's really up to you and what you want to do. I do recommend doing some more of the savory foods first and then doing fruit a little bit later. So we're holding off for a few weeks before we start introducing things like bananas or maybe cooked stone fruit like peaches and we'll prepare those the same way we prepare the other foods. If you're thinking about doing pure raids, you don't have to go out and buy a special blender or any kind of special device. You could get um, reusable pouches if you want to, to put the food in and they can squeeze it out, but you don't have to get a special blender um, or a food warmer or something like that. You just use your blender and then you put all your ingredients in there and blend it up. You can puree meats and things are a little bit tougher to make it easier for the baby to eat. That's how we've approached baby's first foods with our third baby. And as far as drinking goes, I mentioned that we use a regular cup or a cup with a straw. So when we first start giving our babies liquids, I usually just do a little bit of water with their meal. And how I do it is I fill up a little child size cup or even I've used a non-breakable shot glass. Fill that up with a little bit of water and then you sit it in front of the baby and you take their hands and help them put their hands onto the cup and bring the cup up to their mouth. So you're kind of modeling, you're scaffolding how to drink out of the cup and they'll probably chew on it and not drink a lot of the water. By the time they're one year old, they should be able to drink from the cup by themselves. So if you have a baby that's about to eat solid food, I hope that this video was helpful for you. I'll have some helpful things linked down in the description box for you. And if you have a question or a comment, just leave it down below and I'll try to answer it as soon as I can. And if you liked this video, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. I share a lot of helpful content. I have a lot of pregnancy content, postpartum content, baby content. I share fermented food recipes, food from scratch. So if you like any of that stuff, make sure you're subscribed to my channel. And I'll be back again soon. Later this month, I'll be sharing how to make fermented fruit. So if you're interested in that, please stay tuned. And I'll see you guys again soon. Be well, guys.